I'm Dr. Oka from Neogenesis Systems and Live Blood Online. So we're going to run through the parts of the microscope, starting with the power switch at the bottom of the microscope here at the base. So switching this on will switch on the light of the microscope. You should see it coming through the field iris diaphragm at the base of the microscope here. Um, if you don't, on the LED systems, when the light intensity is at its minimum level, the light will not be on. So when you switch it on and there's no light, it doesn't mean that the light isn't working. You simply just need to increase the light intensity here. All right, so that's the light intensity. You can see the light becoming brighter as it comes through the field iris diaphragm at the base of the microscope. Going on to the condense and control knob here. So this is a very important one. You'll see that the stage doesn't move when I adjust this. It's just the condenser unit that moves when we move the condenser control knob. And the reason we do that is just when we removing the bright field condenser and placing the dark field condenser into place under the stage. All right, above the stage, we have the different objectives. There's five objectives here. These provide you with the different levels of magnification. And you'll see that they are, are, that they are color coded and then there's a number on them as well. All right. And these slide into position fairly easily. Um, very important to mention with this though, is that the first four objectives from the red one, the yellow, the green, as well as the blue, are all dry objectives, so it means that they don't need any oil for them to work. Um, the last one, the 100 times objective, or the white color coded one, would need a bit of oil. You'll see there's oil printed on it as well. Um, you will need to place a drop of oil on the front of the condenser for you to actually see through this, con uh, through this objective. Uh, we will be covering the use of this objective in more detail in a separate video. But just important to mention that once you've used this objective to be aware that there's oil on there and um, not to then get oil on any other of the other objectives when you move them back into place. So after using the 100 we always move towards the left so that there's no risk of getting oil on the front of the other objectives, especially this 40 over here. Alright, after that then we have the coarse focus knobs at the back. Okay, so these are on the same system, so you can adjust them with your left or right hand or both if necessary. And you'll see moving the knob away from me, move the stage up, moving it towards me, move the stage down. Uh, so this is really just a focused sample, and once you've focused it, we use the fine focus knob that adjusts the stage by very fine increments, just to really get the sample nice and clear when we're looking at it. So going on to the right hand side of the microscope, we have the X and Y axis control knobs here on the right hand side. So these are attached to the stage and attached to the slide holder. So you'll see moving them moves the slide holder on the stage. And this is really just to move around in your sample when you're viewing it on the microscope. So you'll see there's two separate knobs there that adjust the sample and moves the sample along the X and Y axis. Above that, next to the head of the microscope, there's two silver knobs. Now this knob at the lower end here, um, you would have seen it earlier while assembling the microscope. This holds the trinocular head in place, so there's no need to adjust that. But this little pin above it, this is the phototube eyepiece pin. Basically when it's pushed in, you'll notice that you'll be able to see the sample through the eyepieces and there'll be nothing on the screen. When it's pulled out like this, you'll then be able to see the sample on the screen. So at any one time you would need to, deciding to, based on where you want to be looking, you would need to either have it pulled out to have it displayed on the screen or pushed in to be able to see the sample through the eyepieces. Lastly, on the right hand side of the microscope, we have the tension adjustment knob. Now this is just on the inside of the coarse focus knob. You can see it actually has tension written over there. Um, and this little knob basically adjusts the tension in the focusing system here. Now it has been factory set to a level where it's comfortable to work with while uh, maintaining the level of focus, but over, the t over time it might become necessary for you to just increase the tension here. Um, if, so if this system feels too loose, you can just simply turn this knob away from you to increase tension or towards you to reduce the tension in the focusing system. So let's have a look at the condenser 
unit under the stage in a bit more detail. So we're just going to use the condenser control knob here to lower the condenser. Now you'll notice that there are two large silver screws here on either side. Now these are the centering knobs. Adjusting these would move the condenser around in this beam of light. Now it has been factory set so that it's right in the center of the beam of light. Um, so we usually don't advise that these are adjusted at all. Uh, if they are adjusted, the condenser won't be aligned properly and you would probably find that your dark field um, doesn't work properly. That's the, the main cause for dark field not actually working um, in blood analysis. So these are the uh, centering knobs. We're going to remove this bright field condenser by loosening the condenser holding screw at the front here, which is the small screw. Just turning it slightly will loosen it. We're then able to remove this bright field condenser. So the bright field condenser is a pretty simple system. It's just some lenses that help to focus the light onto the sample. You'll notice that there is a frosted filter at the base of the bright field condenser. And we also have an iris diaphragm inside the condenser. Now, when we're using the bright field condenser for bright field, um, this frosted, uh, this, this iris diaphragm is always in a closed position which is at the right hand side of the groove. So the pin would be at the right hand side of the groove. The frosted filter would of course be in place under the condenser. Once it's out, we're able to place the dark field condenser into position under the stage. And we'll look at that uh, in a bit more detail later on. So let's put this back. And just tighten it. And this always has to be racked up to its highest position when we're using it for bright field and for dark field. So let's move that up to its uppermost position. You'll also notice that it stops on its own. So lastly, the eyepieces. You'll notice that these can actually be adjusted for your intercapillary distance. So you basically just have to look through the eyepieces and adjust these uh, to a point where you're actually able to then see simultaneously uh, through both eyepieces. And then on the left hand side we have something that can be adjusted here as well. So this is for the diopter, um, just for the difference in focus between the eyes. Um, so this would need to be set for your own eyes. So we would focus the sample uh, through the right hand side, through this eyepiece with a fine focus at the back of the microscope. And then look through the left eyepiece and focus over here so that both sides are clearly in focus.